If you did not get the C-19 shot, should you be cautious about the food you purchase going forward? The answer is yes, and this video documents why this is the case. Here is a table of contents for the video. Per the attorney, Tom Renz, livestock will be given the mRNA shot. It's been proven that mRNA can be transmitted through food, so you'll effectively be vaccinated without your consent. This proposed Missouri bill, HB 1169, would require that foods containing the mRNA shot be identified as a gene therapy product. The genetic editing of plants to contain edible vaccines is well underway. Work is being done with bananas, potatoes, tomatoes, lettuce, rice, wheat, soybeans, and corn. Companies like Medicago are using gene editing to turn plants into mini bioreactors. Medicago's manufacturing facility looks like a nursery, but inside these plants, they're growing a new kind of vaccine. The technology is called a virus-like particle. At Medicago, we use a careful step-by-step -step process to develop vaccines using our plants as mini bioreactors. We start with the gene sequence or code of a virus. We then use our technology to synthesize the virus code into a real biological product. The code contains genetic instructions that our plants can read, and we insert it into bacteria called Agrobacterium tumefaciens. We submerge the plants in a bath with the bacteria that carries the information into the plant cells. And using a vacuum, we suck out the air between the plant cells and replace it with the liquid. The plants absorb it like a sponge. At the end of their bacterial bath, we return our plants to a carefully controlled greenhouse to let them get on with their natural growing business for at least four days. Now the plants will start producing the most important ingredient of our vaccines, virus-like particles. Gene editing is now officially in our meat industry. Lobbyists for the cattlemen and pork associations in several states have confirmed that they will be using the mRNA COVID vaccines on their livestock. Attorney Tom Renz has been warning that there is no law requiring anyone to give informed consent for vaccine food. There are no laws requiring anyone to tell you the food you are buying has been vaxxed with the spike protein clot shot. The UK recently passed into law the Genetic Technology Precision Breeding Bill. The bill amends the Environmental Protection Act of 1990 to exclude references to precision bred organisms so far as they relate to marketing. Precision bred organism is another term for gene edited. So now in the UK, food that's been gene edited can be legally marketed as non-GMO. And if this UK gene edited meat makes its way to America, it can be labeled non-GMO here as well. And so long as it's butchered in America, it can be labeled product of USA. The fake alternative meat being pushed by Bill Gates and others is made of immortal cell lines. In other words, cancerous tumor cells. Real meat is being blamed for climate change. And a recent independent study suggests that most of our meat is already contaminated. Using infrared spectroscopy and electron microscopy, Dr. Anna Maria Mielcia has been studying the blood of the vaxxed and the unvaxxed for over a year now. And at first, she was finding the same contamination in only the blood of the vaxxed. A contamination that she describes as ribbon-like structures, much like the mysterious blood clots being found by coroners. But lately she's been finding these ribbon-like structures in the blood of the unvaxxed as well. By measuring the frequency of one of these mysterious rubbery blood clots, Dr. David Jennigan has developed a way of detecting the same frequency in the vaxxed. Recently, he's found this unique frequency in the meat being sold in his local grocery store and asked Dr. Mielcia to confirm his findings. Her microscopy showed that the blood samples taken from products in the grocery store were all contaminated with the similar ribbon-like structures found in the blood of the vaxxed. Most of the meat in the grocery store is from overseas, and if we want to eat uncontaminated meat, we'll have to start buying direct from farms in America that still produce all natural organic protein and take back control of our democidal government. Many Americans pay more money to shop at Whole Foods, but do they sell gene therapy products without telling you? Rosenberg, co-founder and CEO of Aero Farms. Aero Farms is the leader in vertical farming. We define vertical farming as layer upon layer of plant growth. We grow plants without sun, without soil, and most importantly, in fully controlled environments, which allow us to really understand how to plant growth works and how to scale plant growth to optimize. And the optimization is key for what I'm about to share. And this is how we can be most impactful to COVID-19. As we all know, part of the ability of humanity to get through COVID-19 is to have therapies and vaccines so we could go upon living our lives. And the challenge is to scale the solutions once they appear. And at Aero Farms, fortunately, we've been working on very specific therapeutic solutions and vaccine boosters, as well as creating a platform to produce proteins for protein-based vaccine solutions. And as some background, about 30% of all vaccines are protein-based. So that's where proteins at AeroFarms are part in the solution is to produce the protein that is used as a vaccine or a pharmaceutical ingredient that's manufactured into a vaccine. So first on the specific therapeutic and vaccine booster we've been working with, we've been working with a leading professor who has used these proteins as a vaccine in animals and has gone through preclinical trials with excellent results uh, to provide confidence to a lot of parties to go into 
now human trials. And we, we are working to be the partner to scale up this solution. And our expertise in growing plants to optimize protein production really aligns with this professor and what he's doing. Again, we understand the, the environmental systems to maximize the proteins, which essentially allows us to grow plants faster, to produce proteins faster in a more cost-effective manner. We have the capacity now to do this and convert one of our existing farms. We've built 10 farms, one of which is the largest vertical farm in the world. And we can convert the, the capacity of one of our farms to treat pretty much every American and every person in the United States that has high symptom, has symptoms for COVID-19. Separately from that, we wanna create a platform. And here we've partnered with leading industry experts that essentially produce the equipment before and after growing a plant. So the plant here acts as a bioreactor produced this protein. And the equipment manufacturer provides equipment that inoculates a plant with a bacteria to produce a protein, as well as to extract the protein. And here too, with our expertise in growing these sort of plants, if we could maximize the protein, we essentially reduce the extraction cost. So we are the contract manufacturer in this, but it's the essential part. The protein production is what's hard here, and that's what we wanna to work to scale, both on the specific therapy and vaccine booster, as well as creating this platform. So our ask, among other things, is for specific introductions to GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, as well as Novavax. Of the universe of vaccines, these are two leaders in protein-based vaccine solutions. Additionally, we wanna partner with parties that have a long-term view and positive impact on the world. Find people that would finance some of the solutions we're talking about to add value, especially in underserved markets. We know once a vaccine comes to market, there's a big waiting list to provide vaccines to everyone. And here we believe we can provide the system that grows and produces proteins at one-tenth the cost of traditional methods of producing these proteins. Thank you and special thanks to our friends at Unreasonable Group as well as Barclays Bank. This is something that I found surprising. They're anticipating rollout of mRNA vaccines for COVID for basically all of our livestock industry. These screenshots, and you can pause the video as necessary to read them, are from a December 2022 social media post documenting that animals already get vaccines. Vaccines begin to lose their effectiveness in a relatively short period of time. Never mix modified live or chemically altered vaccines before they are needed. For modified live products, mix only enough to be administered within one hour, as products cannot be stored. Reconstituted killed vaccines can be stored for short periods of time after initial use, but they should not be kept if anything other than a sterile needle entered the bottle during use. Never vigorously shake or expose vaccines to sunlight or temperatures outside the range listed on the label, as these practices will inactivate the vaccine. Here are more screenshots from that post. After I had completed the first draft of this video, I was sent this article by Dr. Mercola. Are you eating pork injected with Merck's mRNA livestock vaccine? The following video is from 2019. Hey, we're here with Joe Roeder. He is the Director of Technical Services with Merck Animal Health. So thanks for being with us today, Joe. You're more than welcome. Um, we're here at World Park Expo and you just made a big announcement. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Sure thing, Sarah. Merck Animal Health, we're very excited that we just launched Sequivity Technology at the World Pork Expo. Sequivity Technology is a novel new approach to creating very customized vaccines for swine producers and veterinarians. It is actually a platform technology that allows us to, in, in, in a very innovative new way, create RNA particles for vaccines that are targeted to the specific diseases that swine veterinarians and producers are having a problem with at this point in time. Here's another report from the Epoch Times. The process by putting mRNA gene-based technology in foods, you could have a salad and get vaccinated against potential biological threats. Dr. Aaron Cariotti is former professor of psychiatry and head of the medical ethics program at UC Irvine and author of The New Abnormal, The Rise of the Biomedical Security State. The concept is treating the human being like a piece of hardware that requires mRNA or DNA software updates every few months. We discuss a frightening transition happening in medicine today from core Hippocratic principles and informed consent to what's arguably a transhumanist technocratic medical paradigm. It's a level of control over people's freedoms that the totalitarian dictators of the past could only have dreamed of. So what can be done? Well, from a practical standpoint, you can spread awareness, grow your own food, support local farmers and ranchers. You can join a CSA. From a political standpoint, many Americans spoke out against the COVID shot agenda, but most did not. Silence is viewed as consent. Will Americans continue to bend the knee or collectively stand up? I'm Elizabeth Glass.